Order! 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 You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! joined in the studio by the lovely Miranda Green <laughs> and by the man who Angus Robertson has every reason to be nervous of on manoeuvres in Westminster on our sofa tonight, ambitious SNP superstar John Nicholson. Welcome to you both. <laughs> Alan Johnson, can, uh, should Ken Livingstone remain in the Labour Party? It's certainly true that there's no Labour problem that the arrival of Ken Livingstone can't make worse. <laughs> uh, um, I, I wouldn't go as far as chucking anyone out of the Labour Party just now. I, I've got a feeling Naz Shah's be the only person who emerges from this with any credit because her apology was absolutely fulsome. Her local synagogue, synagogue has tweeted in her support. She is genuinely repentant. And then she... She's only repentant. She repented once she got lumbered, but she, once she got rumbled. She describes the remark as anti... Semitic and then Ken comes in to defend her and says it wasn't anti-semitic. So, you know, I don't think he helped the situation at all I don't know why he just didn't You know wh why he didn't just refuse uh, all The opportunities to go on but Jeremy Corbyn wasn't the media to suspend her either has the Labour leader been Half-hearted slow in his response to these cases of anti-semitism in your party well it, That that might be the worst accusation you could throw at him that he was slow in responding no one could suggest he's anti-Semitic and no one can suggest our party is anti-Semitic, which is why dealing with this quickly, I take your point, has to be done uh, uh, soon. And I think uh, she herself realised, now Shah, that actually stepping down as PPS to wherever she was PPS to wasn't good <laughs> enough. It had to go further and, but, she's, and she's done that. Mr Corbyn denies there a crisis. Is there a crisis? Well. Andrew, you've been in politics a long time. If you question any leader and say, is this a crisis, you're unlikely to get the answer yes. No, but is it? I don't, I hope not. I hope There's not. an awful I lot mean, of these cases coming. I mean, when I yes, started and... in journalism, the anti-Semitism was largely confined to the hard right, uh, even including parts of the Conservative Party. Uh, today, it seems to be coming when, from a wing of your party. We're not an anti-Semitic party. That's not what I said. No. Conservatives but... were not an anti-Semitic party, but they had anti-Semites in them, in their right wing. You, part of party, has seemed to have taken over this mantle. I, but we got an inquiry by Jan Royal. There was a problem at Oxford in the Labour club there. And we've never been allowed to see that report? Well, she hasn't completed her report. No, no, there was an original report oh, right. done right. by the Labour students, which was then suppressed, and a bigger, more overarching report was uh, put in its place. I think this situation was being dealt with reasonably, and then in comes Ken Livingston and stirs it up. What do you think? Um, I think that there's a problem on the left with a sort of anti-Western instinct and this is easily sort of seen in parallel with an anti-Israeli uh, rhetoric. And then, obviously, that can slide over into anti-Semitism, and it happens far too frequently. And also, a lot of discussions even about Israel and about the legitimate criticisms of Israel are, are carried on in a kind of terrible ahistorical way without appreciating why the state of Israel was created. But you had a Liberal and Democrat MP. I agree. A Liberal agree. Democrat um, MP yeah. who made outrageous statements and he made them in a parliamentary speech. Yeah, he should have Would been got rid of. Would you say the Liberal Democrats are anti Semitic? Well, he, he, was only, he should have been got rid of. He was only you know, suspended and, for three months at the first time. Yeah. And, and a peer who tried to justify terrorism, who, you know, who, who did have the wit withdrawn. But it, it, there should be zero tolerance yeah. for it because it so easily s slides over into something which is the origin should, of violence. Should Ken Livingstone be removed from the Labour Party? Well, he's certainly doing the Labour Party enormous damage. He just struck me listening to that interview as the worst kind of crushing pub bore with mm. that kind of semi-informed mm. uh, but utterly self-confident uh, description of uh, German history. I mean, that thing that he said about after Hitler went mad, as if there was a, a, a previous rational Hitler, you know, maybe the one who wrote Mein Kampf for the, you know, the Munich Putsch yeah, Hitler was, yeah. was the calm. He obviously, wasn't, fine. Mad. That one was fine. He obviously yeah. wasn't mad when he wrote that. No, no, he's yeah. completely, yeah. completely rational. I mean, it was just, as we say in Scotland, havering. 
And, um, <laughs> but I have to say... But you're havering a bit too because you haven't answered my question. Should it be thrown out to the yes. Labour Party? Well, that's a matter for the Labour Party. No, I'm not, no, I'm not asking that you do it. I'm asking for your view. Well, I would certainly be... If I was a Labour Party member, I would be very uncomfortable having him in the party. And, uh, and I think one of the problems with, with Jeremy Corbyn, whom I'm sure is a very nice man, is he's so indecisive. And there was a, there was a great metaphor, I thought, for his leadership today, which is he saw the cameras coming and he swerved away to try and avoid them. Um, instead of going straight up to the camera, giving a clear, well-considered response, okay. he, he ran away for a couple of hours, and it just makes him seem uncertain and, and directionless. Why is this anti-Semitism now found more on the left than its traditional place on the right? Um, well, I, I couldn't swear that there is no anti-Semitism oh, on the right. I well, no, I'm not saying that, but all the right. recent cases well, we've had have come I, on the left. I, I, think, I think Miranda put her finger on it. I mean, the, the, the new element has been a developing attitude in the Labour Party in particular to uh, Israeli policy. And, uh, and one understands why a lot of people do object to Israeli policy. A lot of uh, Israelis object to uh, Israeli policy. But I don't know how it has been that uh, this has crossed over into something that looks awfully like anti-Semitism. And to me, it is absolutely extraordinary, you know, particularly as a London politician, as I was for a very long time. There was a terrifically solid Jewish Labour support. Indeed. Uh, and there was a fantastic amount of Jewish Labour money. And uh, it's all very well to say that, you know, Jeremy Corbyn, if you ask any uh, leader, he'll say there's no crisis. What struck me was that Jeremy Corbyn really looked as if he didn't think there was a crisis, as though it hadn't occurred to him that there is a crisis. But, but I, there clearly is. I mean, not only the reputation of the Labour Party, but the damage that it's doing to its electorate and the damage that it's doing to its finances. And all of this is just before a whole series of elections. Let's come on to the doctor strike. Uh, Alan, you, you've been a health secretary as well as a home secretary. <laughs> um, where's it going? Oh, I mean... <laughs> In one sense, I sympathise with Jeremy Hunt. It's very difficult dealing with the BMA when they've got their dandas up. And what they do. You once described it as uh, the BMA is Scargill with a stethoscope. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's the guy I was negotiating yeah, with, yeah. Lawrence. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I have got to like him. It's not a bad line, that is a great yeah. line. Yeah. He was. Not the union, the person I was... Uh, that's what I meant. And he became a good friend of mine. But that's the point. I was negotiating with him. Uh, now, there was a time in this dispute where I think there could have been a settlement. I mean, Dr Dan Poulter, who was a junior minister who served under Jeremy Hunt, was part of that consensus to say, look, there's a way out of this that allows both sides to come out. And I think Jeremy Hunt was foolish to reject that. Perhaps foolish not to get engaged in developing a consensus somewhere along the line to find... I mean, he's now in a terrible situation, and the junior doctors are in a terrible situation. They're in a terrible dilemma. I know from experience, because I was also a union leader, that once you actually take the strike, as opposed to kind mm. of threatening it, then in a way, you, ne you know, all bets are You're not going to get more than you had on... He wants a fight, though, doesn't he? That's quite clear. The way he responded yeah, to that letter, bit of... because there's an all-party letter, because Dr Philippa Whitford, From who's SMP, our health yeah, spokesperson, yeah. who knows something about this, because she's a breast cancer surgeon, and we're not having these fights in Scotland with the junior doctors. She joined a Conservative and she joined Labour people uh, in, in sending the letter to him, and it was very disappointing. He responded by a kind of very dismissive tweet... Yeah, okay. I thought. Let me, uh, since we've got you here tonight, John, let me ask you this. Is there not a grave danger to your party, a serious danger on May the 5th, that you don't win every seat? <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I don't know what's going to happen. I, I'm yes, you do. <laughs> I'm contractually obliged as an SNP politician to say we're taking nothing for granted. That is the phrase <laughs> I, I have that. to use. Well, right, to, who's going to come, to since we know who's going to win, who's going to come second? Um, I'm not meeting many Labour voters on the doorsteps. Uh, the ones that I do meet and talk to quite often say, I'm so depressed about the party, I'm going to abstain. Um, I, I think the, the huge shift uh, from the Labour Party to the SNP happened at the time of last year's general election. Um, and that's remained? That's definitely remained. That, OK, let me... Coming from neutral observer. Yeah. So it's going to be <laughs> the beginning of the Lib Dem fight, fight back? 
Well, one year is quite a short time to start a kind of generational recovery. No, I just I said argue. begin. Begin. I didn't okay. say recovery. I well, just said begin. It would be nice to is see. It? it would be nice to see a few green shoots or yellow shoots but will appearing. You? Tim, I don't, Baron, get any cut through? I don't know. I think it's very difficult at the moment. I mean, it ought to be the case that with the Conservative Party kind of tearing it to pieces mm -hmm. over, over this Europe issue and Labour, and Labour doing everything uh, having an embarrassing about. day after embarrassing day, that there was a kind of Lib Dem voice of but reason at the centre. But there's not much sign of that. It's, You've kind of been written really, out of the script I think instead. that's true. I think that's true. I think, I think the poor Lib Dems are a bit written out of the script. But, you know, they say that in individual council by-elections they're starting to cut through and win back territory that they held mm -hmm. before. It's a long road. It's a long road. OK, not long to go to May the 5th. We'll find out. Thank you both.